One of the things that's always really attracted me to tiny house living is the idea that by downsizing our homes, we really can increase the size and the quality of our lives. And that is exactly what's happened here in Wellington, where one woman's decision to move into a tiny house really has made space for some big life changes. Hey Kelly, how are you? I'm really good, thanks. Nice to meet you. It's lovely to meet you, and I am so excited to see your beautiful home. This really does just have such a striking exterior, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I love it. I always wanted my tiny house to be a bit like a tramping hat. It's kind of uncomplicated and just with really minimal details, and I think it looks amazing. It certainly yeah. does. And we'll talk more about the house soon, but first your parking spot. You really lucked out with this place, didn't you? <laughs> I sure did, yeah. There are people close by, but no one's looking in on me and I'm surrounded by green and yeah, it just feels really nice and peaceful to be out here. So it's a great spot. And what was it that really drew you to the idea of building a tiny house on wheels? Yeah, I guess I'd been working for 20 years in the electricity industry and I was starting to get a bit bored with my job and I wanted to change. And I owned a three bedroom house at the time. Mortgage was fairly steep. Just if I wanted choice of what I wanted to do, if I actually wanted to be able to choose something that was important to me, then I needed way more flexibility in terms of how expensive it was to live. And yeah, I wanted things to be simpler, not to have to spend as much time looking after everything. So that kind of got me into really looking at it as an option. And that's worked out really well because I've been able to retrain as a kindy teacher, which is far from a lucrative <laughs> career, but this makes it possible. And I'm sure that your tiny house here feels worlds away from the kindergarten. <laughs> <laughs> it does. So kindy is loud and exciting and funny. And when I come here, I recharge. And this tiny house is completely off the grid, isn't it? Yeah, so I have a water connection to a water tank, but um, electricity, I've got solar and gas. So completely off grid for electricity. That definitely makes it a lot easier when it comes to finding a parking spot, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does. I can plug in if I need to, but one of the things I wanted to have was just the flexibility of being able to move if I needed to. And so I've gone as off grid as I can. And so tell me about the design of the exterior of the home. I guess when I was talking to the architect, they gave me four different sort of concept designs. So we talked lots of different roof pitches and things like that. And I'd originally gone in saying, I like the corrugated iron and probably black. We also looked at a sort of wooden rain screen, but it ended up being too heavy. So went back to the original idea. There really is something which just completely catches your eye with this sort of very beautiful, simple, minimalist black exterior. And the corrugate's a great choice as well because it's also very lightweight and super hard wearing as well, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, so low maintenance is really important to me because I am far from being a handyman of any kind. So I sort of wanted just to be able to build it and then not really have to do anything. And what size is the tiny house? Uh, it's uh, 7.2 by 2.4. Pretty yeah. standard, I think. Well, the exterior of the home really is striking and I cannot wait to see what you've done on the inside. Can we take a look? We sure can, come on in. All right, thank you. Oh, this is lovely. It really is the dictionary definition of minimalist in here, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. Do you actually live in here? <laughs> I do. I just wanna be able to live in the space without any visual clutter. And I love the plywood, so it's nice just to be able to look at that. And I guess I focused on having heaps of storage, so everything has a place to go away, and I get home, I put stuff away, and then I can just enjoy the simple space. That is such a great way of doing things, because you're right, in here there is absolutely no clutter whatsoever. But what you do have is all of these windows just giving you such expansive views into the outdoors. Yeah, I spend way more time than I'd like to admit just looking out the window. So it's just nice to slow down and actually watch the world go by. And then right here we have this super cozy looking sitting nook. And again, the window just giving you that wonderful connection to the outdoors. Yeah, so this is where I, where I spend the bulk of my life. So I love to read and it's got the great views all around. It's a really comfortable spot just for relaxing. 
And all around this nook, I see you've built in storage space. Yeah, so clothes and shoes kind of around here and the storage up here is almost empty. So I might have slightly overdone the storage, but it's great to have a bit of additional space. Underneath the couch as well, there's space for um, just, I have the sawdust for my toilet and spare duvets and different things in there. And then over here, we've got your kitchen. And again, you've gone for this really nice minimalist look with the stainless steel countertop and the plywood. Yeah, I love to cook. So the kitchen's really important to me. And I wanted a really long run of bench space just so that I had heaps of room and I didn't feel cramped or crowded. I cook to relax. So it's nice just to have the space to really spread out and enjoy it. And I wanted a proper oven. I know quite a few tiny houses don't have one, but there's heaps that I do that I want to use an oven for. And I love my sink, it's massive. <laughs> Having a big sink in a tiny house kitchen really is almost essential, isn't it? Because you is. need to have that space where you can just put things away and still properly wash your dishes yeah. and everything. It's something that I've said to other people who are thinking about building tiny houses is don't skimp on the sink, you need it. I completely agree. And one of the things that I also notice as we sort of move into the kitchen space is that the pitch of the roof really allows this home to feel very open, doesn't it? As you sort of move into the house, it all expands out in front of you. Yeah, I really wanted that feeling of space. So the other thing that I love here is that I've got a full width of the floor for a section of the house, that it's not built out, that there's nothing over here. And I think that creates along with the roof pitch, just a feeling of space. And then is that your bathroom down the end there? It is. Can we take a look? Sure. This is lovely. And again, having that similar kind of joinery in here just pulls you in and ties everything beautifully together, doesn't it? Yeah, it's minimalist again, and I didn't want it to be a complicated space. So in the bathroom as well, everything has a place that it goes away so that when other people are here, it's just a simple space that's easy to use. And you've got a great size shower in here. Yeah, I was actually surprised at how big it was when I saw it for the first time. And I see you're using the Bambaloo composting toilet. Yeah, it's been fantastic. It's a really, really simple system. It's not hard to look after and anyone can use it. And then it's quite lovely as well how you've got the basin and then a good sized mirror above it. Yeah, and the mirror actually works out really well. I often have the bathroom door open and it actually reflects back from the window at the other end. So you have a sense that there's actually more green around you than, you know, it's not real, but... Lovely. And then over here as well, you've created so much additional storage in your kitchen space and your stair space. Yeah, I think that's one of the advantages of having stairs, and I really wanted stairs, is that you gain so much storage under the stairs. So at this end is food, mostly, so I've got um, a simple pull-out pantry. This space here is actually designed for a washing machine, but I don't have a washing machine, so I have the advantage of having lots of family in Wellington, so I stay at my mum's once a week, and I do my washing while I'm at her place, and I just wasn't convinced that I had enough power to run a washing machine off grid. So it's a, it's a simple solution to sort of dealing with that. And then upstairs here, we've got your sleeping loft. Can we yeah, take a look up there? we sure can. All right, after you. The stairs, they're actually incredibly comfortable to use, aren't they? They are. I really didn't want to go for a ladder. I just think they're hard to use. And yeah, these stairs, they're pretty easy, even without a handrail. I don't find it difficult coming up and down. And it's really nice that you've got this mezzanine section beside the bed as well. Yeah, I saw this idea online for a tiny house and I just thought so much better to have a place that you can stand next to the bed rather than always being on your hands and knees while you're trying to make the bed. And the bed itself just looks so cosy. You've got these two windows either side, which are really nice for views and airflow, and then that skylight, that is pretty nice, isn't it? <laughs> it's great. I didn't want a loft that felt closed in, and so the skylight was a must for me. And I've gone for one that doesn't open to kind of avoid leaks and things. I don't think having a wet bed would be a particularly good thing. And then the small windows for airflow work really well, and it's across my feet rather than my head, which is nice. So how long have you been living in the tiny house now? Uh, I've been here for eight months. Right. And it's really interesting to kind of experience a space over different times of year. It's quite different in winter than it is in summer, and so I'm still really enjoying just 
finding out what it's like here, where the sun tracks and where the sunsets are. Yeah. Wellington, as you mentioned, in the winter, it can actually get pretty chilly. How do you deal with heating and insulation in the home? Yeah, so the house is really well insulated and double glazed. So again, without having curtains, it's actually warm enough in here. And I have gas heating. So the gas heater is mounted under the trailer and just vents in through a vent and controlled here by a thermostat. And how are you adapting to living in the tiny house? I think it has just made life simpler. It's great, I can clean the tiny house in about 10 minutes, so there's not a lot to look after. Everything has a place to go away. It's a nice, clean space to be in, and I love that. Have you always been a minimalist? No, <laughs> I haven't. I did have a three bedroom house just for me, and it was pretty much filled with stuff. But once I started thinking about this, it was good. I had quite a lot of time, so I had a few years in my house where I just started to um, kind of recognise what I didn't need. That's a really easy way, I think, of downsizing, is if you have time and space to do it. What would you say that your favourite aspect of tiny house life is? I think my favourite thing is that you can live in a beautiful space, but you can afford it because it's not so big. If I lived in a larger house, then I couldn't have something that was this nice. And because this is smaller, it's affordable and I can actually have what I want. Speaking to that affordability, what was the cost of building this home? Uh, it was about 150000 The solar is reasonably expensive. And I think compared to the average cost of a house in Wellington, that's about a quarter of what it would cost to buy a house. And then when you factor in the high quality of all of the finishings in here, that cost really quickly makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And I, I think the other part of it is the ongoing costs of living here, which are incredibly low. <laughs> Even in the middle of winter, I probably spend 10 or $11 a week on gas. And that's really, other than some land lease cost, that's all I pay for while I'm here. Everything else is essentially free. So a big part of making the decision to move into the tiny house for you was about downsizing, was about getting rid of some of those overheads so that you could do more of what you want in life. And is that working for you? It is. A lot of being here is about flexibility and it's about having the option to make choices in the future. So at the moment I work four days a week. There's the potential in the future that I might only work two or three days a week because that is doable and then I can put my time into other things that I want to do. And I don't have any Wi-Fi and I have pretty limited phone reception. So when I'm here, it's just a space for being quiet by myself really. For me, this space means rest and relaxation. It's just about being quiet and still and not having things crowding in on me. And it's a beautiful space to be, and I love that that's part of my life now. Kelly, I am so impressed with this home. I think everywhere I look in here, I see something really beautiful. You have done such a great job with the design, and I wish you all the best for your future. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. <laughs> Thanks for coming. This home is absolutely everything that a tiny house should be. It's simple, it's mobile, but most importantly, the space is beautiful and incredibly well thought out. Here, Kelly has absolutely everything that she needs. And what I really love is she talks about this as being a place of rest and respite, a place that she can come home to where all of the problems of the world outside can just melt away and she can be completely herself. And that is exactly what a home should be.